Hey future doctors, welcome to Vesserverse. Today we're starting one of our most important series, the foundations of dermatology. If you can master the language we're about to learn, you'll be able to describe and often diagnose any skin condition that you see. So let's begin. By the end of this lecture, these four objectives will be a second nature to you. This is the framework that every dermatologist uses. We're going to learn or actually quickly revise the three main layers of the skin and their functions. We're going to define and differentiate the primary skin lesions, including macule versus patch and the differences between a papule and a plaque. We're going to identify common secondary skin lesions and the configuration of these lesions, which provide diagnostic clues to us. Before we even talk about lesions, remember this golden rule of dermatology. The entire body is examined as a whole. A rash on the hands may be connected to a hidden patch on the scalp or the nails. For instance, if a patient has psoriasis and they presented with a lesion on their hand, I want to definitely, or maybe their trunk, I want to definitely also check their scalp and also their nails because we also have nail psoriasis. And as we're gonna discuss later on in this playlist, once you see a sign on the nails called a salmon patch or an oil patch, this is technically a pathognomonic of psoriasis. And therefore, checking the entire body is actually a golden rule in dermatology. Oral and anogenital mucosa. For instance, another patient presented with a blister on their skin, I want to definitely go and check their oral. It could be something called pemphigus vulgaris. And again, we're going to discuss also this. We're going to dedicate a different video for this autoimmune disease. I want you to think of the skin in three simple layers. The epidermis, this is your outer wall. The dermis, your separative framework and the hypodermis, where we have fatty tissue, which is important for insulation. The epidermis is your outer barrier, and it has keratinocytes, melanocytes. These are producing melanin whenever you're exposed to the sun, and this is technically acting as your natural sunscreen. Langerhans cells, these are a specialized subset of tissue-resident macrophages. Your dermis is the middle layer, and it contains collagen, blood vessels, and nerves. It gives the skin strength. The hypodermis, or also known as subcutis, this is the, your fat layer and it's important for insulation and cushioning. Now we came to the essence and the most important concept of this lecture. Is what you're looking at the cause of the disease that is the primary lesion? Or is it a result of something that happened to the primary lesion, so it turned into a secondary lesion? A primary lesion is the original lesion, and it's the initial change that appears on the skin. The secondary lesion is what the primary lesion becomes over time. It could be that the primary lesion is itchy, and the patient starts scratching that, and eventually it turns into secondary lesion due to these changes. It could be an infection. It could be a trauma or even healing is shown in this picture here. Here we had an ulcer. Uh, over time, it grew bigger and then eventually over six weeks, it healed and formed a scar. A macule and patch are all about color. There's no texture. And if you were to run your finger over it, you will feel nothing. It is just a color change. And remember that the only difference between a macule and a patch is the size. We don't care about anything else. A macule is typically less than one centimeter. It is flat and again, non palpable because it's only a change in color. A patch is bigger than one centimeter, just like shown here. It is non palpable and it is technically a larger macule. You can't feel these, they are perfectly flat. An example of these, a freckle is an example of a macule and a vitiligo is an example of a patch. A papule, plaque, and nodule are all bumps. These are elevated solid lesions on your skin, and if you were to run your finger over these, you'll feel a bump. 
The difference between a papule and a plaque is just like a macule and a patch is the size. A papule is less than one centimeter and a plaque is larger than one centimeter. Both are elevated and both are palpable, both are solid, but the difference is a plaque is bigger, it's like a confluence of papules. A nodule is similar to papule and a plaque in some aspects. It is similar to a plaque being bigger than one centimeter. However, this is much deeper in the skin. It has a depth and volume. If you're looking at a nodule, it feels more like an iceberg. You can tell by just looking at the lesions that there is something deep in the skin and as well as above the skin, making it look more like an iceberg. Looking at some examples of papules, blacks, and nodules, this acne here is a very typical example of a papule. Psoriasis, just as shown here, is an example of a plaque. It is elevated and it is palpable and it's definitely more than one centimeter. Epidermoid cyst. If you look at this, it feels very deep compared to this epidermoid cyst to this papule. This is bigger, again, it's more than one centimeter, but it's also very deep in the skin. You can see how deeper it looks as compared to a papule. A vesicle and a bola. These both are fluid-filled lesions. And what's the difference between these? Just like any other lesions we discussed so far, you can see the pattern here. A vesicle is less than one centimeter and a bola is more than one centimeter. Both of these are elevated, fluid-filled, but this one is a larger version of a vesicle. Key features is that they both contain fluid, they could be tense or they could be flaccid. They could be hard to rupture or some of them are easily ruptured. Classic examples of these are one HCV1 virus causing vesicles. As you can see here, they're very tiny, they're less than one centimeter. You can just tell by looking. If it is bigger than one centimeter, and a classic example of this is this disease called bolus pemphigoid. This is an autoimmune disease causing these large blisters called bolus. A pustule is a primary skin lesion that is elevated and filled with pus. It could be white or sometimes yellowish, as you can see on the screen here. And these could be either sterile or infectious. A typical example of an infectious pustule is acne. And another example of a sterile pustule is pustular psoriasis. A wheel is a hallmark of urticaria. These are elevated edematous transient, meaning that they come and go within a few hours, typically less than 24 hours. And if it lasts more than 24 hours, then this means that this is not a wheel, this is not urticaria. Alright guys, we came to the secondary lesions, and this is technically the changes that happen over time to the primary skin lesion. Now, a scale is one of the changes that can happen. These are flakes of stratum corneum and very typical in psoriasis. A scale implies that there is high turnover. A crust is a dried exudate. So here we have a weeping um, primary skin lesion and there are a lot of exudate that are dried and accumulated over time and formed something called a scab. This is very typical in Empitigo. Another high yield example of secondary lesions are erosions and ulcers. And as we have discussed before, here, for instance, we have a blister. It's a bola or a vesicle. And it could be flaccid and rupture. And when it ruptures, it leads to an ulcer or an erosion. The difference between an erosion and an ulcer is the thickness. An erosion has only partial thickness, while an ulcer has full thickness loss. This is a very typical example of an ulcer. This is called a venous or a stasis ulcer. And when it heals, it leads to a scar. This is another example of erosion. And this is, uh, this, it does not lead to scarring. This is very typically seen in a disease called pemphigus vulgaris. And this is another autoimmune disease that we're going to talk about later on. Lastly, we want to talk about how lesions are arranged because the arrangement can give us a clue for diagnosis. 
if there is an annular arrangement, just like shown in the picture here, this is a ring-shaped tinea. This is typically tinea corporis. It appears in the body, and this is a fungal infection. If it is linear, as shown in the picture here, then I can conclude that this is maybe a Koebner phenomenon that is seen, seen in many diseases like atopic dermatitis. It is seen in vitiligo and other diseases. Or it could be contact dermatitis. Maybe you had something on your skin with such a shape, and then because you're sensitive to that, then the, that left a lesion, just like the shape of the thing that has contact with your skin. When you see a cluster and groups like this, you want to think of herpes, and in this case, it is herpes simplex virus 1. If there is a dermatomal pattern and it follows a line that's shown here and it's unilateral, then I want to think of shingles. Just a quick summary of what we've discussed in this lecture and the key takeaways to remember from this video. First, you want to describe the lesion. You want to see, is it flat, is it raised, is it solid or fluid filled? And in this case, we're looking at a primary lesion. Then I want to take a look for secondary changes. Is it scaly? Is there crusting? Is it eroded? Then in this case, we're talking about secondary lesions. Third, I want to check the pattern. Is there an annular, linear, or grouped and cluster pattern? And then lastly, I want to remember the golden rule. I want to examine the entire body. If I see the lesion on, um, on the trunk, for instance, I want to definitely go and check the hair, the scalp, uh, the nails, sometimes the anal genital area, and oral ulcers. That wraps up our lecture for today. To help you master this, I've created a free lesion glossary PDF that you can download from our website, theserverse.org. If this video was helpful, please subscribe and hit the like button. It truly supports our channel. And let me know in the comments below what you want to see next.